Hey, 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 Hardies. Welcome to the Hardies Hotline. I am Cami, the Hooked Hardy. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah, the Hawkeye Hardy, and I did it. I did it wrong again. I I swear I'm to myself, you, I just right keep it. Time. Just keep it. <laughs> well, apparently, I'm gonna just go. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm Sarah. Hey, and everybody. <laughs> welcome to season eleven. Episode four, Along Came a Spider. Okay, here's the question for you. Who's the spider? <laughs> More like a black widow, it looks like. <laughs> right? Uh, widow being the interesting term to use there since that was not how we pictured her okay. at all. I am, I, I wrote it in very, very big caps letters at the top of my notes. Oh, wait, you only do that when you're serious. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was Lucas up to? I mean, he... in the past? Yes. So, so here's some thought process of the situation here. Lucas came to town. Everybody was super suspicious. A I'm lot starting of people to didn't think they him. should have stayed with that, you know, from what I'm hearing. Nobody <laughs> thought they could trust him. He built up a lot of trust over the first couple seasons. We had the run-in with Amos. We heard about Jeanette. This yeah, widow we heard friend about of Jeanette his that he helped get out of a bind. A widow who was his friend, who um, the way he described her... She was um, in her 50s or 60s. And now, I do want to go back. He never said her age, but the way that he described her and how he said that Amos was stealing her livelihood and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. This this Jeanette person is, a fr actually, I thought, oh, well, that kind of ruins all of the, suspicion and the buildup in the suspense and like oh just 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 a an old friend he's that he's just helping, helping. An old lady. yeah yeah he's just he's helping helping an old lady friend. who was his friend yeah so i mean so there is that element of you know there was a lot that we've been misled about and and not necessarily intentionally although probably um but not necessarily in a in a way of malice. It was definitely he was it was it was very clear that he was trying to have a fresh start and leave all of that behind him. So I I don't fault anybody for not wanting to share specifics. And through several seasons, he was not actually dating Elizabeth yet. <laughs> he was. You know, so it's not like you're intentionally starting a relationship off fabricating. The fact that he used to be engaged to this woman. I feel like that should have come up later. I, I mean, I wouldn't have brought that up early on. No, Before they were officially not. a couple. But I feel like there's a way to at least have alluded to it back maybe when they went to the... The book reading you know they're having dinner they're talking about how he would love to be married someday and i mean there would have been an easy end to be like i almost did once but it didn't work out you know i mean mm -hmm. it could have been very you wouldn't have even had to say you were engaged but just be like oh, i came close once you know i mean that sort of a comment would have been that would have been an easy in right there yeah, And I don't think, and I know he was trying to like woo her and not scare her away, but I think that would have been easy to bring up in that context without it being really scary. Yeah. Yeah, it would have. Um, when he said, what kind of trouble can I bail you out of this time? That's when my entire perspective of her being the helpless widow who was under Amos Dixon's manipulation 
completely did a flip flop. I went, wait a minute. And then later on, he says, I'm no longer living that life. He makes a very big point in that same episode when he goes to help Jeanette and then Elizabeth is taken hostage. He makes a very big point of telling Nathan that he's only cheated once. But I'm starting to wonder, you know, <laughs> you know? and how many fibs has he told to yeah. help out Jeanette or to appease Jeanette or what have you. Now I have to mention that Jeanette is played by the same actress who postables will recognize as yeah. great grandma Betty in Sign Seal Delivered Home Again. But we see her for that much time blink and you'll miss her so mm -hmm. this was a really great time to see what she's like as an actress and <laughs> the first thing i wrote about her besides her sleek appearance was her voice and i wrote smooth as hot honey I, I heard that once in a movie that was set in the 20s, actually, actually, the 20s or the 30s. And so I went, huh, it fits. It fits. <laughs> Smooth. I mean, because her dulcet tones. It was beautiful. Very, was beautiful. very confident and never showing too much emotion, but having it right behind her eyes you know, I went wow okay <laughs> yeah that uh yeah. I I have uh I have coined the title of this episode as when has that ever stopped me a line that Rosemary <laughs> said because think of how many people that applies to in this episode. <laughs> what uh, I mean, Jeanette, you know, I'm not, I'm not that man anymore. When has that ever stopped me? Yeah, and uh, Maisie Hickam, the the road doesn't go here. When has that ever stopped me? And then, of course, you have Rosemary actually saying the line that she is in her nightgown and when has that ever stopped me it is so, which was the most hilarious part to do it but yeah there were a lot of um people who did not want to be stopped in this episode and one thing that i think shows it the most mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught this, but when Jeanette gets in the car, she's shooting daggers. She is mad at Lucas for sending her away. And then she sees Elizabeth and you can see her make the decision. And I went, oh my gosh. She, and, inter yeah. she introduced herself out of spite. Oh, there was one. Oh. She was looking. She was looking when she the, her her introduction line of I think no no we don't but I think it's about time we did. That is probably near the top of why she came there in the first place. And I'm surprised Ooh. she didn't track her down. Soon. Yeah, this these kinds of conversations would have been more threatening had they happened before the engagement was broken off. Actually, no. I think that she thinks she has a shot with Lucas now. 
and mm-hmm. she has to solidify her place. She has to mark her territory. She has to prove. And I think with Lucas pushing back and not wanting to entertain her bid and and all of those things, I think she thinks if she can ruffle the feathers with Elizabeth, that, you know, Lucas won't have any reason to want to stay in Hope Valley. Okay, yeah, you make a good point. So I should have clarified Elizabeth would have been more threatened if they were still oh. engaged. So yes. the fact that the fact that they're not, I think that Elizabeth is more baffled as to why this is happening. She doesn't feel threatened because her position not- is not being threatened. But <laughs> what made me laugh the most, and this took me the second time around watching it, but Elizabeth says. Oh, well, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Jeanette's face just falls. She, yeah. it's she didn't get the reaction she wanted. It, yes, it's subtle, but she looks disappointed. She looks disappointed that Elizabeth did not react and start a cat fight. But unfortunately, she did get the reaction from Lucas she wanted. That's the problem. Yeah. So... I looked it up to make sure because I wasn't 100% certain. Do you know what Cherie means? No. I was going to look that up too and I forgot. I I figured it was a term of endearment. Yes. Yes. So I used to think it was for a woman. You know, Mm. I used to think it was specifically for a woman. So when I heard her call Lucas Cherie, I thought it was you know, Madame or Miss or Lovely Lady, a a compliment as well as a title, you know, that kind of thing. And then she called Lucas Sherry. And I went, wait, that's not right. So (laughs) I looked it up on my phone and sure enough, it means darling. And I went, ooh, ooh, she she trying to spark something. (laughs) I mean, we already knew that, but yeah, um, I felt really bad, like for Hickam getting in the middle of that, that was a hilarious scene other than the awkwardness of it, but well, I liked it because we don't see Ben and Aaron do many we scenes don't. together. And so I loved that scene. And that is what made it probably as funny as it was, was yeah. to see them play off each other in that type of, I, I it was exactly the same energy as right after the engagement was broken off and Hickam was trying to cover up the posters so that she wouldn't see him so that she wouldn't be upset but I mean it was just so great because you see him he's so aware of everything going on he picked up on the body language from Lucas and it just all played out very it was a very well choreographed scene and and just very funny but at the same time you're just like why why other than the fact that you can see as the episode plays out that this woman isn't somebody to trust you don't know what she's going to do regardless like part of it yes is probably that lucas doesn't want all of his history all of his dirty laundry aired aired out (laughs) (laughs) to the whole town like somebody somebody commented about that like you know that that wasn't very fun to have that all shared with everyone right but there's also part of it too where he doesn't know what she's gonna do and if she is a troublemaker and she doesn't care who gets hurt in the process then I can also see him just wanting her to get out of town because he wants to protect these people in this community that he cares about yeah. So it's kind of twofold, probably. I thought it was really interesting when she says, I told you my investors are on the level. And he takes it up a notch. He said, This project will be completely above board. So, you know, he's saying, I don't care if they're down here. This project is going to be it's up, up here. here. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, we're not doing anything that can even be resembling shady. 
Yeah. And then he said, and then he says it again. He implies it. He says, I've changed Jeanette. I'm not like you. And I went, what were these two people doing? I mean, were they a Bonnie and Clyde? <laughs> no, I know that. But, but I mean, still. not for sure, but it sure seems like maybe some sort of con artist type situation. Well, and then at the very end, when he's going the through picture. the bid, of course, she just slaps that photograph of them. I went, really? Really, Jeanette, you're going to slap a photograph of the two of you in the back of the bid. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't it seem so reminiscent of Rosemary season one? Maybe that's why Rosemary was so keen on getting in there and breaking up the conversation. <laughs> is because well, she recognized I it. <laughs> but I mean, there were so many similarities. Meeting on the street, not knowing about the engagement, finding out right there in the first meeting of the engagement. Very sleek, very stylish entrance, grand entrance. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine that happening to you twice in your life? While we're right there, I just have to take a minute and give props to the prop department. <laughs> did you did you happen to pause and look at the newspaper that Lucas was looking oh, at? I meant to, but I was my hands were all dirty. I was cooking when when I was watching that part. Okay, it is fast. It is fast. You can barely even see it, but I paused it and I took a shot of it with my phone. So the article that he is presumably chuckling over is Bouchard to preside over first annual governor's Easter egg hunt by Rosemary Coulter. And mm -hmm. then annual dog show fetches a crowd by Rosemary Coulter. <laughs> but then, <laughs> no, 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 this is where it gets funny. Weather wears on the weary by Lee Coulter. <laughs> And she gave him the weather report. And fishy feelings by Lee Coulter. So the, I really want to know what that one's about. I can't read it. It's too <laughs> small. But the first annual governor's Easter egg hunt, I I even closed in on it. And it says the children of Hope Valley are hopping with excitement with the announcement by Governor Lucas Bouchard, and then it gets too small from there. And I went, yeah. wow, they even wrote an entire article on it. And I went, man, oh, props to the prop department. But yeah, the the ones that are grand, you know, <laughs> annual dog show fetches a crowd. Rosemary wrote it. <laughs> Bouchard Time to fight the over the egg hunt. Rosemary, Coulter, then the weather and fishy feelings. <laughs> They're both by Lee. <laughs> so, while we're on Lee really fast, I just have to take a moment and just applaud Kevin big time on his acting. And what I mean specifically is reactions. Oh, because that's his, yeah. That's that is his forte, yes. But I tell you, when Rosemary starts talking about hyp hypnosis and all of that, I was watching her the first time. The second time around, I watched him, and I rewound the and I rewound the scene a couple of times so that I could watch all of his reactions. Oh my gosh, the man's a comedic genius. And he's mm -hmm. so good at reactions. It reminded me of his reactions when, <laughs> when Rosemary plays puppet with Murphy. Oh, yeah. And Miss <laughs> Katie and, and Lee just goes, oh. And he's he's very subtle, except for that very first one 
when he does oh and just groans but oh my word he was so subtle but so engaged it was mm -hmm. amazing i wrote down every single one of his reactions okay <laughs> So, Rosemary thinks hypnosis is a fabulous way to get Lucas to remember who shot him. Okay, so the first big one, he's just standing there and he's listening, but he's listening very attentively. But when she says, where was I? He goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> it just, I don't know where you were. And then she goes, hypnosis. And that's the big thing. Pascal is so big with the Rosemary character that Lee can kind of fall into the background. And if you're not watching him, you miss it. But it's so good. So she goes, hypnosis. And he just goes, mm. <laughs> just this tiny little close the eyes and a little shake of the head like, oh, dear, she's at it again. <laughs> and then uh, and then when. <laughs> I can't remember where he did this, but at one point he cocked one eyebrow. Like, really? Huh? It, it's just like, what? I can't even do it. I can't cock one eyebrow, but it looked so good on him. It's just, oh, wow. It, it, is, it is really, really good to watch Kevin react. That's, that's almost as much fun as listening to a speech by rosemary right well i think that's what sets a lot of things on this show above other shows yeah is the little things that make it so realistic it's a lot of times the same actors and they get to really develop those characters even if they're not on screen very much and and they just kind of get their own personalities and really become very real and I mean, Kevin's definitely a main character on the show, but you just get to have all of those pieces in the room and even the smallest little reaction from different people support the main part of that scene. Yeah. And it's, I, I don't think you find that even on some of the really big budget network shows. Well, and not only support, but enrich. It just, it really makes the scene that much better. Yeah. It's, oh, it, it's, that's that's what I love about this show is all those little pieces and all those little characters that you get behind. And when you have something like that, you can get to the point where you're in season 11 of a show and you're celebrating this massive milestone with this character who started out as a stuff boy 11 years ago and you can get me so fully behind it because they were the tiniest little character who didn't even have a name yeah all the way worked up over 11 years to be a point where they're a focal point a focal point yeah and that's just that's incredible there are so few things that really truly do that well, where they can take something that wasn't anything and build it up. You know, somebody who has really gotten good at that is Jada. I was watching her my second time through and I was really focused on oh, her. She had some good reactions too. She, yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. She, even, even when speaking her line, her voice, falls just half a pitch when Minnie shows up it's barely even noticeable and see two years ago she was being very big about reactions and she has really developed the subtlety and the and the really calm but obvious if you're looking reactions when um when she notices Nathan looking at Elizabeth and Lucas, which he does quite a bit in this episode. <laughs> but when she notices, she's very 
quiet about it. And she has not been in past seasons. And I just really think that that is a testament to how much she has grown as an actor. You know, she did that very, very subtle turn of the head, look of the eyes and like she was about to say something and then changed her mind. It was all very small, but it was there. And I just went, oh my gosh, who has taken she has, she has come along. Who has taken you under their wing and given you that? And you have obviously learned from that because that was incredible. And I would actually say, um, because I had um an episode from season 10 on this week that my my kids were watching. And I felt like Kevin did that several times where he was picking up on Allie's behaviors and he was almost saying something and then thinking better of it. And so it's just, it's funny that you bring that up because I specifically noticed that in the community, in the community dinner episode. And huh. it maybe, maybe Jada's picked that up from Kevin. Very possible. When Allie says, no problem, Mrs. Yost. We were talking about little things. I don't know mm -hmm. why. It just made me so happy because yeah. we always hear her called Florence and like, no yes. problem, Mrs. Yost. I went, oh, right. She's married. I know. <laughs> She's married and eager to start her pop list. <laughs> yes. Presumably for Easter dinner is what I'm guessing. I know. While we're on kids... We've talked about Allie. Let's go to the dynamic duo of the brother and sister who are conspiring against their father. <laughs> At least that's the way he would yeah. see it. Oh, yeah, that's how he's going to see it. All right. Yeah. We'll bet. Um, they're being a little sneaky. A little? Um, they're pretty smart about it, though. They they definitely have quite quite the plan. Here are two other people who you could say that they were thinking, when has that ever stopped me? <laughs> Dad's not talking to his brother. When has that ever stopped me? Because <laughs> so, they're not letting it stop them. Now, I do think that it's a little difficult for Cooper to write the letter as if he's Joseph simply because he doesn't know the history. If he oh, incredibly. But when has that ever stopped a child from thinking they knew it all? <laughs> Never. When has that ever stopped me? <laughs> I mean, it seems like, I mean, it's it's reminiscent of things like the parent trap. Um I mean, kids just always think they've got, oh, we'll just trick them all into just, it'll all be fine. Nobody will know. That they've we got it the in letter. the bag. Nobody will know that we switched places. Yeah. It's yeah, so I simple. Mean, Cooper, Cooper's already at a little bit of a, of a disadvantage because the big reason is that Joseph is so eloquent. He's so good mm -hmm. with words. And I don't think that's something that Cooper, yeah, he hears his dad talk, but I don't think that Cooper has quite mastered the phrasing of words the way his father has. There's, yeah, there's adult pastor eloquent and there's, you know, middle school eloquent and, and they're a little different. Just a little. I, I think, I think Cooper is pretty, uh, He's pretty sophisticated for his age. Yes. But I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it working, especially without details that he severely lacks. Yeah, as, the history. As do we all, as do we all. The, so the age and the history, those are the two things that are working against him. And that's why, I mean, I almost think... I don't know how the story is going to go, obviously, but I would think that 
a letter from a nephew and a niece yeah would mean more yeah yeah absolutely because I we want to meet you whatever's going on between you and our father can we put that aside so that we can meet you and get to know you who's gonna say no to that well and I mean not that I'm promoting dishonesty but it sounds like they're already planning to be dishonest if they're gonna oh, say they it's are. him if they're gonna say it's him then you might as well I mean just say it's you and say your dad like say you know make something up make make it sound like Jake like Joseph really does want him to come oh, that, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're doing the invite at least then you don't have to try to act like somebody else <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that that's that's tricky so I mean if it were me and it was a letter coming from children that I had never met who are begging to meet me I wouldn't be able to say no so I would think that would be more effective but that's me I don't know or 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 better yet make it really intriguing say something happened to your dad yes and he needs and he needs to come quick you need to come quick something's happened he's hurt real bad and wants to see you before it's too late. He's like, in a fevered delirium and he keeps calling your name. I say something that makes him like rush there. Yeah. Can't yeah, wait. absolutely. So that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting to figure out what's going on there. The other kid that he was letting something stop him, but now he's not letting it stop him anymore. Toby with the fractions. Very adorable. I loved it. Seemed a bit too easy, but you know. It did. But you know, <laughs> we're we're gonna blame time for that. Yeah, we had to we had to jump ahead. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. But it was a great way to make it relevant to the storyline while also bringing in like some culture, some history. This is how my mom did it. And she taught me how to do this and, and like really making it concrete and then actually make sense with what he's been going through the last several episodes. Well, and the other thing is that I think the big thing is he's having trouble with numbers on a page that's what's not making sense to him when he's holding an actual object and he's been doing this type of decorating for his whole life basically i'm i'm very curious as to which old country his mother came from because <laughs> there are a couple of possibilities but we won't we won't go down that rabbit hole <laughs> but uh <laughs> we could be here all night <laughs> but uh but something tangible like the way that uh the way that elizabeth taught the kids when she was helping them study when she was tutoring them for their exams she brought pie and it mm -hmm. was something tangible and it all of a sudden made it very easy so i think with something that Toby has been doing his whole life he knows fractions he just doesn't know them with numbers on a page because he's been trying to memorize homework problem answers but when he has something tangible that he can put his hands on and actually look at and count then and he's been doing it his whole life then yes. he's got the answer straight away so I can see that that was a little too quick but on the other hand maybe not you know it's net we never know yeah while we're on the subject of children let's talk about the sweet and very innocent question from little Jack because I don't think that he was upset I think he was just confused. Processing. It, yeah. Definitely. It, yeah. Because he had never seen like... his mom as a teacher. Yeah. 
yeah, I loved how he just, it was, it was just a very natural comment, even more than a question. It was just like, it's, it felt like you were everybody's mommy. And that's just such a profound way of putting it into words of what that would feel like to, to have to share your mom's time yeah. with, ev with a whole room full of other kids. Yeah, a lot. For the first time ever. And keep in mind too, like this isn't a single parent household where even though he has a ton of people that help take care of him, when he's with mom, it's just the two it's of them. mom. He doesn't have to share her attention with anybody at, at, in their home. He doesn't have to take turns with any other siblings. He doesn't have to, mom and dad don't need their, their time together. Even when she was dating Lucas, they rarely did that like in front of him, tried to yep. take alone time. Like he was off somewhere else if they were having time alone. Yep. Um, and so it just like, I, I, it, it makes total sense that he would not have any concept of sharing her. When Elizabeth takes the time to stop, crouch down and say, I may be everyone's teacher but I am only your mom. And that's the most important thing I will ever be. I thought parenting win, hashtag parent yeah. win right there. Yeah. Because totally. that, was, that was a good move. Yes. And I'm sorry, he's going to be old enough for school next year. What? Kids four. <laughs> Where did the time go? <laughs> I mean, That's crazy. she found out that she was pregnant at the end of season five, and it's now season I know. 11. <laughs> it fits. I know. It just seems crazy. I know. It does. <laughs> it seems very crazy. And Highland is just delightful. He's so cute and so sweet. And just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, he makes a great little Jack. And yeah, he's he's so much fun to watch. It's going to be entertaining. It is going to be very yes. entertaining to see him at school next year. <laughs> so. And I I also would like to add in, I, I am still hoping that Lily sticks around in some capacity, whether that's with Faith or not. The two of them being basically the same age, really playing off each other I think that would be really nice to have like just a little friend for Jack that's his age and in the same kind of developmental stages I think yeah. would be really great um and if that works out that she's with Faith that was really sweet to see some like parent bonding kind of moments between Elizabeth and Faith too that, that was, was really sweet nice. I mean and it's really, it's really generous of Elizabeth to lump Faith in with parents because that conversation could have easily been switched. You know, Elizabeth could have said kindly, but said, you're not, you, you have not raised this child from a baby, but she didn't. She called her a parent. She said, parenting's parenting is a challenge it's got its it's got its challenges and it's got its joys and faith is the one who says i'm not a parent and elizabeth gives her a look that says yes you are <laughs> but but she doesn't say it she says caregiver yeah. then so yeah. yeah that's that was that was you're right a very very sweet moment where Faith gets a taste of what it's like to bond with other adults as a parent. And think about that too. When you're a parent and your friends are single and or not parents, sometimes that dynamic, while you can still be amazing friends, sometimes that dynamic just shifts and it is harder to find things in common or you're just looking for someone to talk to about those things yeah 
that part of your life. And so it's not that you can't be friends with people who aren't parents, but like you also need friends who are in the same stage of life as you so that you can have a sounding board when you're exactly. trying to learn these new things and, and make these decisions. And so seeing her make a new friend that can be, who is in the exact same phase because her child is the exact same age. Like that was just a really nice way to meld that together. And the fairy wings were adorable. And anybody who has had young children knows there are days when they're gonna wear something a little bit crazy and it's sometimes not worth fighting. And there's no need to worry because the other children are probably going to want fairy wings. They won't make fun of them for wearing the fairy wings. <laughs> yeah, no, if anything, that teacher in that in that daycare center is going to be like, if you're bringing fairy wings, will you bring them for all the children, please? Because now I had to make 10 pairs of fairy wings today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So... Let's go to somebody who is very childlike <laughs> and dealing with an issue from childhood. Oh my gosh, there is nothing like being thrown into a situation with people that you have not really been an adult around. It, there is nothing like that. It, you you lose all your confidence you lose all all the knowledge you have learned God. and that full regression you're back however old you were the last time you you saw those people oh yeah and my, my oldest siblings. brother my oldest brother still thinks i'm 12 <laughs> i i right um i'm i'm sure my brother is 12 right when i see him i'm sure i treat him that way too Siblings can bring out the best and worst in you. It is known, no matter what your relationship is with siblings, that can happen. And this is quite the dynamic. I mean, we we heard from Hickam before that he's got, is it five older sisters? Yep. And he's the youngest. I know how that feels. <laughs> you know exactly how that feels in the opposite way. But yeah. You can only imagine, especially being the youngest and you're the only boy and they're all girls. I'm sure he very much never got to be independent. He probably didn't get to choose what activities he was doing. You know, there probably wasn't a lot of money in a house full with six children. To, with to all of those girls. And with all those girls, um, you know, I don't know, you know, all the situation there, but, but clearly they all took care of him and probably babied him a lot. And he probably didn't really get a lot of chance to feel confident in himself, which explains so much about my kick him anyway. Yes, it does. <laughs> but let's, but let's talk about this a little, because number one, He's still technically the mayor. Whoa. <laughs> what? This brings up the question. Could he maybe slide back into that with some confidence? I mean, when maybe when Maisie shakes Lee's hand and says, afraid to take me on by yourself? Just and okay, I gotta say, it's one thing for a, an older sister to be dominating over her baby brother, but then you get her in the negotiations and she's not negotiating at all. And because Lee, she doesn't want to, she doesn't want it at all. So she doesn't no. have to negotiate, but she Lee, doesn't want the project to happen at all. No, she does want the project to happen, but. She, I don't think she does. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. I think she'd be said, okay if they could talk her into it, but she has nothing to lose. So she might as well play hardball. But she was saying that she wanted 
all of the roads on their side and she wanted the resort to be called the Benson Hills Resort. So I think in a way she has that concern of the unsavory types, but I think in a way she does want it to happen. She just wants full control and she doesn't get it, but she wants it. And Lee, the businessman, the cool headed, calm, evenly spoken businessman says can you reason with her do something <laughs> and all and all mike can say is oh believe me she's going easy on you <laughs> once again we've got Maisie hickam i do find it interesting that she has never married because she's Maisie hickam but uh but she right. is I, I just find it hilarious that there's two mayor hickams two towns apart and nobody made this connection ever well not to mention not to mention the fact that now we have m and m and m well may and Maisie, that's pretty funny that's what i mean m and m and m <laughs> so <laughs> but for but for her to just bulldoze her way in so what do you think of her though so let's let's chat about her visit to the ice cream parlor we've talked about her bulldozing so now let's uh let's talk about her sneaking where she is so undercover as a passerby right so number one mike told his mom about may Number two, mom told Maisie about oh, May. Maisie. <laughs> Number three, May is okay with this. In fact, she's happy about it. Very happy about this. She so first of all, they both seem so much more confident after having addressed everything with each other and communicated with each other about their feelings in the last episode. So they both seem comfortable now with moving forward so that's great yeah and when Maisie says Michael you should bring May home to meet mother Mike didn't look 100% convinced that that was a good idea <laughs> however <laughs> he's probably never done that before <laughs> taking a girl home Probably not, because as far as we know, he's never had a girlfriend before. But I think coming from Maisie, that was a compliment. Yes. Because we, because we know from the business meeting that they said, should we take a break for the evening? How about next week? How about next year? <laughs> obviously she is not an easy person to deal with and it takes a lot for her to be on board with something so the fact that she has heard about may she has come to investigate may you know have her vetted <laughs> mayor style is this is this girl good enough for my baby brother and then <laughs> She says, Michael, you should bring May home to meet mother. I think that's the highest compliment she could have given May. Mm -hmm. I think that was her way of doing a stamp of approval. Yeah. Okay. We can't talk about these two without... That was adorable. So we... It's, we it's talked again. before about like they should have kissed by now but it didn't seem like they had um so i'm glad that they addressed it in a way where it was clear that it's like they really want to but they were really nervous too and i love that except may he, was not nervous <laughs> well before i'm sure she was before before they had built up and talked about the relationship and worked through all the insecurities but um i think that was the 
perfect way to do it because he did technically initiate. And so did she. So I think that builds up both of their confidence. Well, and listen to what she says to him. I mean, Mike starts it out by saying, you make me feel like I can do everything right, which every woman loves to hear that, <laughs> that, they, that they have that kind of an influence on their significant other. We, we like hearing that. And then yeah. she makes me feel like I do everything wrong. And, you know, Mike is not a child, but May did kind of the same thing that Elizabeth did with Jack. She stopped. She mm. went over to him. She made Body physical, she made physical contact. Yeah. And said, the problem is you don't know how wonderful you are and capable and brilliant and handsome and lovable. What man does not want to be told these things? <laughs> what man would turn this away from somebody that he obviously cares about? Every man loves hearing this kind of thing from the girl that he is trying to catch the attention of. And May, I really want to kiss you right now. Is that okay? <laughs> May, May Sue pulled a Shane McInerney. <laughs> So that happened, and I am so glad that it finally did happen because it needed to, it needed to so much. These two are too adorable. They're too cute to just carry on the way they're carrying on. And the other thing is, even though it was a very innocent and childlike way to say, I'm going to kiss you, it, you know, it wasn't the smoldering, I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't that, but it was the perfect moment. And it was fitting for their characters. Very, very. Yeah. It was, I mean, if Mike Hickam all of a sudden turned into a smoldering, I, I would have gone, huh? Who, who are you? It wouldn't have made sense, at least in this moment. I think his confidence can build and he could, he could build up a little more towards that for her in private, maybe. But like, you know, they can grow. They can grow uh yeah no I think it's just one of those things like we said earlier he's been on the show so long everybody's been rooting for him for so long mm -hmm. to find love or something <laughs> find some happiness and he's had a lot of misses and it's just it's time this it's it just, is this feels so good to see it to see something come for him after so long well, and for May too, because of her disappointment with Nathan. Yeah. And speaking of which, we probably should, you know, mention him before we end up. We've already mentioned the fact that he did a lot of uh, looking. And, you know, that's where, that's another point where Kevin is really great at doing what he's supposed to be doing because he watches Elizabeth go off and talk to Lucas and Rosemary starts talking to him. He's too busy. And then, huh? It, it it's, yeah. it works. It works for the character because he is obviously quite distracted by a woman who prefers pink to red. Um, I think just like you were talking about Kevin before, I think uh, Kevin does a real good job with um, the more silent internal expressions. Mm -hmm. um, and 
says a lot more with his eyes than not saying other people don't, but like, that's, that's kind of one of his strengths. And that's, you know, that's kind of what the Nathan characters kind of been defined as kind of, kind of brooding, kind of, kind of, um, quiet, strong, silent type, more internal, more, you know, he's not really an outgoing guy. He's not, um, you know, he's more introverted. Yeah. And I'm going to get lost again. Uh Oh, that was my favorite thing about Jack. Yeah. That was my favorite thing about Jack was the way that his eyes, Daniel Lissing used his, those were his secret weapon. And so to see this current relationship i'm waiting for it to take shape <laughs> right it's so hard in this in between phase it's like your imagination's going wild of what it could be but it hasn't been there yet so it's kind of hard to imagine we're getting so much awkwardness we've already been through the awkward stage you know, that that's the hardest part with this is because the awkward stage is so hard when you're in it and you're not sure exactly how it's going to pan out. We know how it's going to pan out, but we don't know exactly the path it's going to take. Well, and the characters I, don't know. We as the audience know, but the characters do not know. They well, exactly. They can't play the end. But it, but we don't know the path that it takes to get there and exactly how it will go. And And so there is some of that, like, we've talked about this before season two was awful to watch during season two because you're just like where is this going it was painful how long how long will we be in this awkward phase how long will we be trying to to figure this part out and and that's the hard part is the unknown once we got through it it's easier I know, I know everybody else in the world doesn't love season two as much as I do. I love it, people, if you didn't know. Um, go you back and watch our it. go back and watch our season two recaps because <laughs> I love I love season two. Um, oh my. But I I argue that anybody who watched season two later after Jack and Elizabeth were married would like season two better on a rewatch than originally. <laughs> I, 90% of people at least would think it was better when you know what's coming and you know I was, I was watching will... I was watching season two on Netflix I found when calls the heart right before season three aired so mm-hmm. I was trying to get through season two as fast as I could because it was killing me and it was what was keeping me up all night you know, yes, I was pregnant and I had insomnia, but this helped because <laughs> I was just going, oh, I got to watch another one. Oh, I got to watch another one. Oh, you know, so. yeah, but but also but also keep in mind, you could watch that like because you weren't watching it live. So you no, got I to was, I was not focus. watching it live. And that that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying is it was bad enough for me watching them in a row in a row. And whereas. I, I can't this even season, imagine watching. I can't even imagine watching them live. <laughs> right. But I mean, so I mean, think about it that way. If, if we were watching this season after it was all aired and we could watch two or three or four in a row, a couple days in a row and just binge it, it might not feel as awkward and it might not feel like it's dragging on as long when if you're watching it more in real time than like literally week to week to week and drag it like that makes it feel much longer because you're thinking about it all week and you're like my gosh this entire week has been awkward like that one hour was (laughs) you know we're gonna we're thinking about Jeanette all week long and like oh my gosh I can't believe she did that oh my gosh that look on Nathan's face oh my gosh the Easter egg and she fell into his arms, which, okay. Woo. Um, Easter egg hunting. That's, that's, that's a fun way to flirt with somebody. 
hiding Easter eggs. It's a new <laughs> and, one. And then uh, nuancing your conversation mm. around Easter eggs. Well, I mean, chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate might really be worth a lot. Might not. Don't ask my husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm like, chocolate? Sure, I'll risk my life for that. <laughs> So you do make a good point because season two, the finale, one of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes would not have meant nearly as much without all the happenings of season two. It's hard because there's been, it. I mean... It's the drama of TV. They're always going to try to drag out a relationship as long as they humanly possibly can. And I don't mean one calls a heart. I mean any, any, any TV writer, period. Um, all TV shows do that. Um, because there is that stigma that once characters get together, no one's going to watch anymore. Well, um, mommy. Sorry. <laughs> and it is below. I mean, it can be. I think that there are times when people are out of stories. And not that there is nowhere else, they couldn't fit anywhere else to take them that made sense. And so it didn't work and then it flopped. And so I think there is that stigma for decades that after that happens. And so they naturally try to wrap them up then. But I I don't know. I think there's so much happening in Hope Valley that I don't think... I, I agree with the concept that many of the producers and, and writers have said about When Calls the Heart. This is such an ensemble show. There are people in this community that there are lots of stories left to tell regardless of where one relationship ends up. And so that I hope that they can keep going even after there's a happy relationship. Yeah. And I mean, I said this... I said this a little while back that I want to see the comfortable bantering because that mm -hmm. was something that Aaron and Dan were really good at together was the comfortable bantering after they were in a relationship, the cute cuddling while joking with each other. I'm very ready for the comfortable part. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people are ready. Um, there's a lot to come. Lot, lots of stuff coming. We're, we're one third of the way through the season. Yep. So we've got a lot of guest stars coming up. Got a lot of characters returning. <laughs> oh man. I'm I'm, so, going, yeah. I'm going to I'm going I'm going to hold myself back. We'll talk about them. In their episode. Okay. Okay. We've got we've got some stuff coming that yep. keep your eyes keep your eyes peeled. Social media, if you're wanting these spoilers, we've been seeing some interesting things popping up. Oh yeah. Some things we've talked about already on the podcast, and some some things we're hearing are quite surprising. Indeed. <laughs> uh, Sarah texted me just today and went, ah! I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> so uh yeah we'll talk about that next all time unconfirmed, all unconfirmed so yeah not gonna spread rumors until we know anything is for sure but but yeah. things being like it could it be this could it be that Ooh, what's it gonna be oh boy <laughs> so i do want to end because this was sweet i want to end with this quote from nathan you were right it was way too high. I thought it should go back to the person who risked life and limb. <laughs> and Elizabeth says, sometimes a chocolate egg is worth it. And I put a little star next to this. Chocolate is so worth it. <laughs> That's especially the metaphorical chocolate he was talking about. All right. Well, both. Both are very worth it. Well, it looks like she's played her cards right. Looks like she gets both.
one first and then the other first now yeah. now the question is did she eat that chocolate egg or is she putting it in a special place thoughts save the wrapper i think she'll eat it and save the wrapper wow i didn't think anybody could get smoothier than me <laughs> sarah you just did it wow what can i say and on that note we will leave you for your laugh for the day. Sarah <laughs> beat out Cammy and schmooziness. <laughs> I feel like that's a record. It has to be <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> All right, Hardies. Well, after you stop laughing, have a great rest of your day, night, morning, wherever you are. Remember you're loved and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Hardies.